second half of chat number 256. And I think it's pretty obvious. I am Kelly. This is if you have an egg.com in case you were just watching the second half of this on YouTube on YouTube. But I think it's pretty clear by now that my resolu my resolution for the new year is to reduce my food waste by 50%. I think that's pretty clear by the end of the year. I've only said it like, I don't know, five times probably in the last two weeks. Um, and after doing a quick inventory, both here at Casey Kitchen Center and at home, because I looked in refrigerators, freezers, um, pantries, you know, I just did a quick, just did a quick inventory. I didn't go crazy, um, but doing a quick inventory because I live here at Casey Kitchen Center and at home, obviously. But after doing a quick inventory of both um, and finding, hello Susie, finding the information that I'm getting ready to read off to you, I'm even more determined to reduce my participation in our overall food waste, okay? So this is what I found going through both of the kitchens. Number one, a kitchen garbage bag size. So like, um, how big is that? How big is a kitchen garbage bag? I don't even know how many gallons that is. Not a 55 gallon bag, um, but however big, however big that is, a kitchen garbage bag full of unidentifiable bags, containers, and who knows what's in the foil, a 13 gallons. Okay, so it's a 13 gallon bag of unidentifiable other bags, containers. I have no idea what they have in them and I wasn't willing to look. Thank you, Terry and Deanna and Susie. Um, who knows what's in the foil? Not willing to look. Um, and how long has it been in the fridge or the freezer? You know, so I just went and put all this about. Filled a 13 gallon garbage bag. Okay, shouldn't, that shouldn't happen. So if I reduce this by half by the end of the year, then I should only be filling up a seven, no, six and a half gallon mm. garbage bag. Just kidding, I don't wanna fill up any garbage bags with 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 food that, sh that is so, so wrong that you can't identify it, okay? I found seven bottles of partially consumed and some of them, oh wait, I'll just run my room in. Oh, ooh. Linda took this opportunity to remind her granddaughter to deal with her leftover food before she goes to her room. So I may be in trouble with Linda's granddaughter. Just kidding. Come on, Linda's granddaughter. You gotta do something with this. Um, but I found seven between the two kitchens. Now this is not just at home. Between the two kitchens, I found seven bottles of partially consumed and some of them crusted over a little bit, bottles of salad dressing. Okay, seven. Um, I found two almost, but not quite empty yet, mayonnaise containers. So I guess we just keep buying more mayonnaise, but we leave enough in there to do something with it and then throw it away. And then probably 20 or so tiny, those tiny little like one tablespoon plastic, you know, containers with a lid, those little condiment containers from various food trucks that we had in, here at Casey Kitchen Center in 2021. <clears throat> and then I found outdated ketchup, jelly packets, um, creamer things, you know, like from fast food, whatever. And some of them were so old. Some of them, oh no, Linda's granddaughter is 16, so everybody's in trouble a lot. I understand. I totally understand. Um, but some of them were so old that when I picked them up or went to move them or went to put them in the trash, whatever, some of them were oozing or they were nearly dehydrated. Eek, yikes. Okay. So all that's gone. I could go on. I could I could keep going, but you get the picture, okay? So earlier we talked about in our chat we talked about star goals. It looks like a couple of you all did this too. Spice racks, cleaned out refrigerators. Um, so we talked earlier about star goals and how important it is to make sure that the goal is specific, truly doable, actionable, and relevant to you. Um. Wait, hold on a second. Okay, Julie, I'm very interested in what you just said. Julie said California has a new law, something to, for unused food, fruit rinds, and vegetables into a compost bin. Apparently, they're supposed to, we're supposed to get these bins. I would personally love that. I would love to have a compost bin, but I'm assuming that means they have somewhere to take it to compost it. So we're having a recycling just stuff Oh, dump. Okay. We're having a recycling stuff issue here in Knoxville because we don't have, hardly anybody does single sort recycling anymore. <clears throat> anyway, so I can't imagine if we tried to compost, but I, I, my goal is to reduce my food waste by 50% and only be composting that other 50%. But anyway, okay. So we talked about the star goals. We talked about it being, you know, 
specific, truly doable, actionable, and relevant. So um, we also need to talk about ladders though. So did you all think that when we were talking about making star goals that we didn't talk about ladders? So did ladders ever pop into your mind? Okay, are fearless? Yes, ladders, ladders, like ladders. Um, so our My Fearless Leader Gwen drew a very simple but insightful picture. It was a visual demonstration last Tuesday night during our in-person workshop. And, um, oh, good Lord, Carol Lou, I'm sorry, Carol Lou puts leftovers out for the raccoons. Please put them so far away that you do not attract them to someone's house, okay? You do not want me to go down, remember zoologists also, you do not want me to go down a path of what kind of destruction raccoons can cause. Okay, hopefully you're giving them food way, way, way far away, okay? Anyway, so Gwen's beautiful ladder demonstration was to show, she, so she drew a picture of somebody standing under an apple tree and they were wishing, remember the, the dream is a wish your heart makes. Um, they were under an apple tree wishing for the apple. So I'm sure that their goal was, I want that apple. I'm gonna figure out how to get that apple. So next to that person, she drew two ladders and one of the ladders only had five rungs and they were spread you know, pretty far apart. Um, they were even, they were evenly spread, but they were, you know, spread pretty far apart. And then the other one had, had like 10 or 12 runs. And, um, oh my gosh, Carol Lou. Okay, we're gonna have to talk separately about the raccoons. Anyway, <clears throat> okay, we're gonna have to talk about raccoons separately, Carol Lou. I'll, I'll call you. I'll private message you. Um, anyway, so the 12 to 15 run ladder, you know, they were also evenly spaced out, but there were like 12 to 15 runs. So, you know, if this wasn't, if we hadn't already been talking about these goals, you know, you might say, um, oh yes, Leslie, I think there are. Okay, sorry, I'm gonna say out loud, and just in case y'all don't see this in the comments, Leslie needs to know if there are any other Canadian Weight Watchers members here tonight. So if you are Canadian and you are here tonight, and today is Sunday, go ahead and raise your hand, say hello, say me, say I'm here because she, has a question, I think. Um, but anyway, so when you're looking at these runs, you know, it'd be easy to say, oh, I'll take the five rung ladder because, um, you know, take the five rung ladder because I can just go, choo, choo, choo. you know, I've only got five rungs to go up. But the truth of the matter is you would either fall or be worn out before you ever got to the top of that one. The 12 to 15 rung ladder might seem like it's going to take a little more work or have, a little, you know, a little more steps, but you know, we could all get there. So we could do it. If it was a 12 to 15 rung ladder, it might take a few more steps, you know, and a teeny bit longer, but you could get there with the 12 to 15 steps. So you've got your star goal, but how is your ladder? So everybody's going to be thinking about their star goal for their homework, but I need you to think about your ladder. You know, how is your ladder? How many rungs do you have on it? So one of the reasons that I have so much food waste is my rungs have been too far apart. So, you know, I, I've always, I mean, always, because my mom, my mom was huge into this. Even before, even before she became vegan, she was huge into composting. We always had a half acre garden. We always had, we lived on a 13 acre farm and we had chickens and chickens will eat a lot. So you think you need to get rid of some food waste, get you some chickens because they will eat anything. Chickens and goats will eat anything and they don't spread rabies and they do not destroy your neighbor's trash can. Just saying. Um, so for give you rabies. Um, so my mom has always preached, had always preached this to me. She had always shown me how to compost. I mean, she didn't like actively say, this is how you compost. This is what you should do to compost. You know, it wasn't like, an, like a conscious decision. We just grew up doing that composting, recycling, upcycling, you know, things like that. Um, to the, you know, to the chagrin of people like, you know, John, because there are little bits and balls of stuff everywhere from upcycling. But anyway, um, but when I have been trying to meet my recipe goals, my food prep goals, my, 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 my rungs have been too far apart. So my, the, the rungs on my ladder have been too far apart. And I've been, and I've been doing this the last couple of years, you know, oh, well, here's my goal. I know it's specific. I know it is truly doable for me. It is actionable because it's something that I'm going to be doing and it is relevant to me, but I'll spread my rungs out so far that when I'm trying to, you know, get up there, I can get to about rung number two or three. And then I either fall down, I get tired, I get out of breath, you know, and I just can't do it. So one of the reasons that I have so much food waste right now is because my rungs are way too far apart. Um, uh oh, Debbie said she's getting a waiting for the live video signal message and the chat is stopping. I'm not getting that. I'm watching with you all live and I'm not getting that message. So Debbie, hopefully it's just your internet. Um, 
but anyway, um, so, you know, anything, anything like that, when I'm trying, when I'm trying to do it, um, when they're spread too far apart, then it is, you know, it's, I'm just going to get tired, you know, and I'm going to fall down. So when I start to do, like when I started the garden last year, I went from zero to 500 as fast as I could, you know, do, you know, doing the garden with Alyssa. Um, and it didn't, it didn't end so well. I mean, it didn't end badly, but it didn't end so well. End so well because we, um, you know, because we, I just went 105, you know, percent, 105 miles an hour without, um, you know, you know, without making my, you know, our rungs closer together. So that's one of the reasons that I have. I'm in this so much food waste situation that I'm in. So I try to meet my other goals like recipe experimentation, you know, things like that, um, and food prep without enough steps on my ladder. So check it out. This is how I'm going to add some rungs to my ladder. So the rest of this chat is called um, reducing food waste, double duty recipes, and just hear me out on this. Even if you don't cook, even if you don't think you're going to cook, even if you don't food prep, you'll be able to get something out of this. And I promise this is going to be, this is a rung on my ladder because this will get me ready for something that we are going to cook next week. So it would be irresponsible of me to try and to try and um, do this and prepare those two things this week. So I have added a rung to my ladder to say, just talk about it this week, Kelly. Next week, y'all can make the food. So first thing, if your food prep rungs are too far apart, so if you've only allowed yourself, you know, four or five food prep rungs like I've been doing, trying to make too much can be worse than making no nothing at all. So I kept thinking, you know, well, I've got to, I have to food prep something, but I was making too much. So making too much can be worse than making nothing at all. Um, don't throw away what's left in the crock pot or those containers that have so much fur that they're walking on their own, you know, that you, you're afraid to, to lift the top because you're literally afraid it's going to jump at you. So here's, here are some ways to add, you know, a couple of rungs to that food prep ladder. So one of them, it, one of the ways is to make, so one rung to add on your ladder is to make a smaller batch or share it with friends or family. So I saw somebody a few minutes ago, and I'm sorry, I didn't catch who it was, but somebody said, I make a smaller batch. Exactly. So last week when I told Karen that I had made a set, my friend, my accountability buddy Karen, that I had made a seven quart crock pot full of soup, she was like, why? Why did you make a seven quart? She was like, make half that. Get a smaller crock pot. Yeah, doy. Okay. So that's a rung to go on the ladder is to make a smaller batch or to share it with family or friends, you know, or, or another family. Um, the second thing is only prep things that only prep enough for a few days at a time. So you know, I've been saying this for years. When I get excited and I prep something and it's supposed to last me for days and days and days, you know, like I see all these people that get all of their planning done, grocery shopping done, meal lists, all these fancy charts and whatever it looks like, something that Casey made, um, you know, it's like charted to death and color coded and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, and I make too much. I get bored with it. I'm going to throw it away. I'm never going to eat it all. So only prep enough to last a few days or another rung that you can add to your ladder is to prep in an easy way and in a way that's easy to grab it, heat it up. Maybe you can freeze it. Maybe you can pressure can. So I know Debbie um, got into pressure canning last year and I'm going to try some of that this year as a rung to my ladder. I'm not going to go crazy with it. Um, or you can make like your own TV dinner. So for the seven quarts of soup, you know, I added a rung to my ladder by we ate it three nights in a row and John was done. By the even though I changed it just a tiny bit, you know, each night it was just a little different. Um, then oh, and Deanna's a food prepper, <laughs> they have therapy for that. I'm just kidding, I love you all, and I wish I could be more like you. Um, but John was done by night three, so I took the rest of the seven quarts and I have divided it up into individual servings. So these are one cup servings in a um, in a super cubes. I also have some two cup ones, so that way, you know. And, and after I take it out of this, I put it in a clear um, freezer bag and it says on it what kind of soup it is and what day I made it so that I can easily look at this clear bag. I can see what it is. It's not opaque. So like if I leave it in this, I've got no idea what it is. But now that they're frozen, I can pop them out, put them in the gallon Ziploc freezer bag and I can put them in there with the name on there. I can even rotate them if I want to. And then that way I know Oh gosh, I've still got three of those left, two of those left, you know, whatever, and go ahead and get that done. So prepping easy to grab servings so you can freeze them, pressure can them, make your own TV dinners, you know, something like that. 
<coughs> okay, if your kitchen stock runs are too far apart. So what I mean by kitchen stock runs is like, we just talked about overstocking a kitchen, okay? And I technically have two kitchens. I have two kitchens. I have one here at Casey Kitchen Center at work and one at home. So if your kitchen stocking runs are too far apart and you bought one of everything or all, you got all the new flavors. So a new, somebody, you know, G Hughes put out five new flavors of sugar-free sauce and you bought all of them, you know, something like that. Um, or you bought every ingredient for every recipe that you were ever going to make and then you didn't use it. Okay, these are some runs for that ladder. So it's hard, but just go ahead and do it. Clean out your pantry, refrigerator, freezer, just do it now of the items that have expired um, or have been open so long that they're crusty. Okay, if you take the lid off and it's crusty on the top, just go ahead and get rid of it. Go ahead and assume it's gross. Okay, um, so expired or crusty lids go ahead and get rid of them. And it's hard and it's hard to fill up that garbage bag, but you got to do it. Okay. You just got it. You got to get it cleaned out and just get it done. I'm serious. I don't like to clean, but it was very rewarding to see two clean shelves in my freezer. Okay. I have two perfectly clean. Now they have soup going in them, clean shelves in my freezer. It was very, I don't know. It was very satisfying. Second rung that you can add to your, um, to your kitchen stock ladder um, is commit to not opening a new sauce or condiment until you have finished another one. So I'm not saying you have to finish all of them, but how about, and I'm talking to me when I say this, how about not opening all of the condiment containers at one time, okay? How about just opening one when you finish one, okay? That's an original thought for me, literally. Um, or find, you can add this run too, and I just did this today, you can find a substitute for the ingredients that are already in a recipe until with something that you may already have. So one of the recipes that I'll be working on this week, so I'm in a, a food contest with Big Mountain Foods, I'm, and I'm entering two recipes, but one of the recipes that I want to enter, I needed, and I'm gonna sneak and read this without showing it to you. In one of the recipes, I needed vinegar, I needed sesame oil, I needed soy sauce, I needed rice wine vinegar, I needed pineapple juice, and I was thinking about miso powder, but I wasn't, you know, I wasn't sure if I was gonna use that or not. But that would have been vinegar, sesame oil, soy sauce, uh, rice wine vinegar, and pineapple juice, and maybe red miso. That would have been six things that I would have needed to purchase. I would have needed to have containers or fresh or, you know, whatever. Of. And rather than do all that, and I just talked about G Hughes, and I don't know why I feel the need to shake it, but anyway, I realized, hmm, I can save myself a lot of time and six ingredients. I already own some sugar-free Asian miso dressing that's already open from G Hughes, <clears throat> and it is sugar-free. It's delicious. I love this, but it was going to take me a long time. I only use this on tofu. And it was gonna take me a long time to use this bottle, but here we go. This is gonna, this will replace six of the ingredients in the recipes that I'm making this week. Six. So I was getting ready to have six open containers of other things that may or may not ever get used and might get shoved to the back of the refrigerator. Ta -da! Here you go. So do that. So think about how you could substitute something. Okay, and then last, if you're if you're, um, well, this is not the last thing I'm talking about, but the last thing for rung ladders is, oh, let's see, Jennifer says she's finding it hard oh, to find ingredients if she only needs like a half a cup or something. Mm, yeah, I understand that. Um, yeah, and Debbie says, take your condiments and put them in the two tablespoon um, super cubes. You could totally do that if it's something that's freezable. So the last thing with um, rungs on the ladder though is if your list of recipes is bigger, and yes, Sylvia, I will be sharing them. It's a contest, of course I have to share them. Um, but if your list of recipes is bigger than the number of people that you have in your household. So for example, you have a recipe like that soup recipe I was talking about, that made 24 servings. I have two people in my household, two, because Alyssa's not gonna eat soup, and she doesn't live with us. She's there a lot, she doesn't live with us. So that made 24 servings, Does that makes sense at all. So if your list of recipes is bigger than the number of people that you have in your household, here are three rungs that you can add to that ladder. One of them is to find recipes with similar ingredients so that they can share the base ingredients. So instead of buying, so like I bought an entire head of Napa cabbage. And I mean, this thing is, it's that big around. 
and it's this tall. So two of the recipes that I'm making for the Big Mountain Food Challenge are both going to use Napa cabbage. If not, I would have been using maybe half of that, and then I promise you here in about a week or two, I'd have been going, dang it, I still have over half of a Napa cabbage, and I'd have been, you know, sticking it outside in the compost heap. So instead, both of the recipes are gonna include Napa cabbage, so two recipes sharing, you know, some of the same base ingredients. Both of them are gonna have the G. Hughes um, sugar-free Asian miso dressing, so they are gonna have some uh, chopped fresh um, pineapple, so they are gonna have some things that are similar, so they're gonna share some base ingredients. So we don't have to have the same thing every night, but I can use up all of those fresh and perishable ingredients. Another room that you can add to your ladder is to save new recipes for when you have friends or family over. So I'm gonna make them here at Casey Kitchen Center. John is more than happy to eat leftovers, but one of the recipes that I'm making is going to make, oh, where did my bag go? It's right here. It's gonna make eight, like, hot dogs, and I'll tell you what they are in a second, but it's gonna make eight. Do you think I need to open an eight? They don't make a two two bun pack. I don't need to open an eight. This will take John and I four knots, and I promise you we'd be bored, even if it's a fantastic recipe and a winner when I get done. We're, we do not need eight of these things. So I'm gonna make this one while I'm here at work because there are one, two, three, four, five, six, six of us here on any given day. So everybody can have one and try one. So add a ring to your ladder when you only try new recipes if you're gonna have friends or family over or if it's like a bigger recipe or when you're in a situation where you can share it at church or with a neighbor or something like that. And then the last rung on that ladder is to plan, this would be so much fun, plan a monthly recipe party um, with some Weight Watchers friends and try out the new recipe together. You'll make it together. You can all live and learn from it. You can share the ingredients, you know, so you might bring the Napa cabbage, you might bring, oh, Dusty's up. You might bring a Napa cabbage, you might bring the fresh pineapple. I might bring my bottle of open sugar-free meat and, you know, Asian, Asian miso dressing. And you can share those so you don't have any food waste because you're making them together. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a sneak peek of my recipes for the contest. So this week I will be finishing, well, so I've already gathered, thought, prepped, prepared, gotten ready for, decided how I'm gonna do this without throwing a lot of this away because that's a frequent happening when I do, when I enter these recipe contests, I do end up throwing a lot of the ingredients away because you've gotta you've got to test it. Um, sometimes it turns out perfecto on the first try, but you need some people to eat it. You know, there's only so many times that John and I can eat test, you know, recipes um, before then we're just so tired of it. We don't want the actual, you know, winning recipe. Um, so this, I was invited to participate in a recipe contest with Big Mountain Foods, and um, I struggled with opening all of these yummy vegan options that they sent while knowing that I had also just made a big commitment to reduce my food waste. So I don't know if you know much about vegan food, but once you open it, you need to use it within just a couple of days. So this is not like a pork chop or something that you can leave out on the counter for three days, or you know, like a hard boiled egg where, you know, grandma leaves it out on the counter, you know, for days or a lard cake or, you know, something like that. And it doesn't, you know, and it's not that it's perishable, but it's not that perishable or you can just slice the fuzz off and, you know, keep eating it. That's not this, that's not how this is. So anything that is vegan, no preservatives, things like that, you can't, you don't know, just kind of, you need to eat them within a couple of days after you open them, okay? So I was like, I want to do my recipes. I need to get them posted. I want to get, you know, I want to get it entered, but I also don't want to open these because I know we've got like three days to eat them or they're going to go bad. I for sure did not want to throw them away because they were so kind to send me an entire case of foods. So um, it would be ir have been irresponsible of me to try and make these tonight because I'm already going to push you all till nine o'clock. I would have been rushing, you'd have been rushing, and half of this would have been thrown away. So I really feel like I met my um, resolution tonight by not opening this without being able to finish it. Um, and they, these products deserve to be tried in the their warmest, freshest, bestest um, temperatures and, uh, you know, freshness situation. Um, and there's no one here to try them but me tonight, okay? So we're gonna wait until, you know, I'm gonna follow my own advice um, for reducing food waste and I'm gonna create double duty recipes. So I'm going to only be preparing as much as can be consumed in a few days when I make these recipes. I'll be making them here at Casey Kitchen Center so that we can consume them in a few days. I'm gonna be substituting ingredients that I already had on hand 
um, for some of the ones where I was going to have to, where I was considering purchasing things, you know, for this contest. I want to win, but I also want to win my food waste reduction goal. Um, and I will be making all of this at work so that I know that they will be eaten and I'll get feedback from actual civilians. Okay, they are not other Weight Watchers. So what am I making? I'll be making, good night Trish, I'll be making um, a Caribbean slaw dog is one of my recipes for this contest. And the other one is Caribbean skillet hash. So they both have the Napa slaw, they both have the pineapple, they've got, both got some, you know, other ingredients that are gonna make them, you know, Caribbean. Um, they sent, what they sent me is, they sent me mm, Mighty Mushroom Bites. They sent me Collie Crumble Veggie Grounds. And I will put a link, um, I'll have Jessica put a link on the chat as to where you can find these. But they are all, let's see, they're vegan, they have lots of protein, they're made with fresh vegetables, gluten-free, soy-free, nut-free, free of common allergens. Um, we'll talk about these more next week, but the two recipes, the, um, Caribbean, let's see, the Caribbean slaw dog is going to be made with the big brat veggie links. And then the Caribbean skillet hash is gonna be made with the superfood brekkie links. So I'm super excited to show you all these next week. I'm super pumped that I did not buy six more things to put in my pantry or my refrigerator. And that I found something that I already had here on hand to be used for that. Um, so I can't wait to show you these in the, you know, in the coming week. I hope that you will seriously think about how to reduce your food waste over the next week, months, you know, the next year. Um, you know, it's going to be hard to throw away all that stuff to get ready, but I think it's going to be good to start with a fresh slate. When we talked about fresh slates earlier. I think it's always good. So you all have a great week. I hope you learned something tonight. Um, if you are watching this on YouTube, please go ahead and let that next video roll on over. I promise you're going to like it. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and click this button um, to subscribe and then go ahead and click the bell so that you'll be notified when the next video comes up. And I had such a great time again tonight. No snow in the forecast today. It's just chilly. Um, but oh, and Susie got her air fryer for Christmas. Awesome. Congratulations. But good night, everybody. I hope you had a great time. I had another great week, and I will see you all next time. Good night.